standing ovation we'd like to welcome the speakers of the day so this couple is anointed anointed called and set apart for the lord they bring joy they carry wisdom immense wisdom they encourage us they love us we love them and with a cheer and a clap please welcome apostle george and prophet winnie Good morning, all. Uh, good morning, all. Is there energy in the church? Oh, wow. Is there energy in the church? Thank you so much. Uh, my wife is just attending to the young ones. She'll be with us shortly, but I'm excited to be here. Uh, you can have your seats, please. So, uh, as uh, I think Sylvia mentioned before, the way, first of all, Apostle Angie sends her greetings. You say hi to Apostle Angie. I think there's a recording. So if you just keep waving uh, to the camera behind there. So the, for the visitors, uh, Apostle Angie is the, the authority of this church. Uh, she's our authority, our covering. And she, she wished she would be here today, but there was an event that she was overseeing. But she will be with us uh, next week, Sunday. So as uh, Sylvia mentioned, the way we normally structure our four Sundays is the first Sunday is praise and worship where we just praise, pray, and, and just worship God over the whole service. Our second service is normally where we have a word, a word of the month. The third Sunday is when we unpack that word in groups and just try and, because sometimes there's so much new information that keeps coming in. So we just need sometimes just to take a pause and unpack the word. And the fourth Sunday is normally a prophetic Sunday where we have a, a prophetic message. And this is an apostolic and prophetic church. So, this month we were blessed on the second Sunday that uh, Pastor Murethi, our father, our father's father, but he also mentioned he's also our father, will lead us on, on that service. And the third Sunday was Rosh Hashanah. I always look at Dr. Tucker. Did I say it correctly? As you may be aware, Rosh Hashanah is, oh, come and join him. My wife, everyone. So uh, the, the third Sunday... Oh, last Sunday was Rosh Hashanah and Apostle Angie released a word upon us. She declared, because Rosh Hashanah is, for the ones who don't know, is the, the start of the new Hebrew year. right? So it's a, a start of a new Hebrew year. And Apostle Angie took that, that sermon just to, to walk us through, for us to go through a lot of declarations and decrees, just to open up that year. So for this Sunday, what we felt is, uh, before we, we, uh, we get into it, in fact, DJ, is there a slide after this? Even before we get into that, please, I know we did this before, but you know, the word says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his cause with praise. So find a neighbor, good looking neighbor, right? If the neighbor next to you is not so good looking, please go to the other side, find a good looking neighbor, just to share three things very quickly, three things that you're, you're thankful for. So if you shared with someone before, at the start, share with somebody else, some, find someone new, just to share three things that you're thankful for. Joy, you be our runner today with the mic. So Joy might come to you. You must say what your neighbor is thankful for. 
So at least you should know what their name is, right? So Joy, just find three people. You have the power to choose one thing per person, just one thing that their neighbor is thankful for. And they should introduce their neighbor's name as well. Hi. Um, I am grateful for no, alignment. What is your neighbor grateful for? Oh. And what's your neighbor's name? <laughs> My neighbor's name is Shiko. Uh -huh. And she's grateful for seeing people through the lens of Jesus. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Joy, run, run around, find someone. Look for the ones who are looking at their shoes. The their people shoes. don't want to speak. Those are the ones that God wants to hear from. Uh, my neighbors are Shitakwa and Jerry. Jerry. Jerry is grateful for friendship and Shitakwa is grateful for winning. For winning. Yeah. Hashtag winning. <laughs> one, more. One, one more, yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Roslyn. I don't know if I should say what I'm grateful for or what my neighbors Your are. neighbor. My neighbor. Her name and what she's grateful for. Oh, gosh. It was Pascal <laughs> and uh, Steve. Um, and I had already talked to my neighbor. You said we should talk to someone we hadn't talked to. So my neighbors are grateful for meeting each other. They said they're here for a conference. And then they said they're grateful to be here, to be in church. <laughs> amen and amen. So with that, uh, as we're saying, Apostle Andy gave us a very powerful word. Who was here last week, Sunday? How powerful was that word? How much energy, how much, how was, was there a shift in your week? Did you feel like you entered the year in a special way? So what we felt as we were speaking with, with Winnie is that sometimes we're very quick to move on to the next word. And sometimes God wants us just to take a pause, just to take a linger on what was said before, just to unpack it a bit more, just to make it more personal so that we're not always moving on to the next sometimes we're on a rat race we're always trying to see before we even accept what we already have we're already thinking of the next car people who get married they're thinking of their having a baby immediately or there's always the next thing that's coming and sometimes god just wants us just to take a pause and to reflect on where we are the season that we're in so for today we're going to have quite an interactive session We'll have some sessions where we do some reflection on our own, but there's sometimes we'll have our reflection in, in groups. So you're in a group with someone who wasn't here last week, just give them a bit of more insights of what went through, what we discussed, so we can unpack this together. So are we okay? Are we ready to move? Notebooks and pens and tablets and, and phones and, and all? Okay, DJ, next slide. So yeah, so this is it. This is it. We are unpacking the prophetic word. So it's Rosh Hashanah, as Dr. Tekla always tells me, the year of 5784. And what it was declared is the year of the open doors. And one thing that Apostle Angie added for us specifically, it's a year of open door for Joseph's in the Goshen season. For the Bible scholars in the room, Goshen was, what was Goshen? Who knows? We try and make it interactive. I think Catherine must know. He said, oh God, yes. Catherine, what, what, what is Goshen? <laughs> Sorry. Um, place, of, place of thriving. Um, the place the children of Israel were given at uh, the time of Joseph. It's the place of abundance, the place of overflow. No, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's exactly yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. It's like when... Um, Jacob came with the, the family. I think there were 70 of them, the brothers of Joseph, when they were invited back home. Once they re when Joseph re revealed who he was, and he made sure that they got the best of the land. And that was what the Goshen was. It was the best of the land, the best of the land in Egypt. So Apostle Sanji released that upon us as well as for us as Joseph's in the Goshen season and for open doors. So um, you see on the next slide, the one thing, even as we unpack of the word, when I was looking at this slide, I was asking God just quickly, what is the difference between a gate and a door? So sometimes we sort of use these things interchangeably and, and the theme of the season is open doors. And one thing that I just sense that God was saying about a gate and a door is 
a door is a lot more personal. Normally a gate is to enter a compound, what you may consider more corporate, like a lot of people go through the gates, but the doors are more private. Normally the door is to get into a specific house or specific room. And, and God was saying that the fact that he didn't call the season open gates, but open doors, it means that there's a, a transition. For some people, it's actually a transition from out of a private room going out. It's just like this door. going. You're going out, or and some people, it's the other way around. And it's always good to know which side of the door you're on for a specific season. For some of us, we've been spending a lot of time in the prayer closet in that secret place, a lot of time with intercession, a lot of time with the Spirit, moving with God. And now this open door is for us to transition out. For some of us, it's transitioning into the marketplace. For some of us, it's transitioned into a specific positioning that God may have for you. So it's not just uh, because sometimes when I first heard about open doors, I thought about it's accessing the things which are for me. You know, the one of us we always shout about is open doors of marriage, right? And it's uh, going into a very intimate and private thing. But there's also a transition that God wants us to look into to going out into where we're meant to be into even like with Joseph, when he was going out to become the governor, to become the, the governor of, of Egypt, there was a door that he, he went through. There was an open door that was released. So I just sense that even as we start to unpack the word from uh, Apostle Angie and the word of this season, there's always an understanding on which side of the door am I? And that this is an, it's a more of an intimate process. It's not for everyone. There's the corporate doors that are opening or the corporate gates. But God says that this is very specific for you. So even as we go through these things, what is that thing specific for you? What is that thing that God is speaking to you? He's been speaking about it last week, the week before. What is that consistent message that he's saying that he wants to draw out even more today? We're still there? I think you've heard too much of my voice. Maybe my wife wants to just say something. Amen. Um, maybe just to add on which side of the door you're on, uh, it also means that maybe you need to get into a new a new mindset a new frame of outlook and vision because that means maybe the the season for the old has gone or what you understood what you knew what was what you are working on and god is calling you into something new so maybe not um and that's why it's so personal and that's why it's so intimate to each and every one of us because you know that which you need to get into say now i need to grow in my identity i've had struggles with my identity on and off or courage or boldness or speaking up but now i need to open or get into a new level or a new room where my identity is strengthened my boldness my courage is strengthened my resolute my conviction so that's why it's so personal to you um, I think um, at some point when we divide into group or into individuals or we have our sessions, just take the time to also listen. Sometimes we have the pre-plan or what we think we, but we need to take time to really absorb. And that's why we said, let's not rush from this message and what was released. How do I personalize it? How how does it become relevant to me as Winnie for my Monday, for my November, for my December, and for the year to come? Yeah. Amen. So if we look at the next slide, the first uh, word that Apostle Angie declared for us was Revelations 3, 7, if you remember. And it reads, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these things says, he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. And she declared upon this upon us. And as we're reflecting and we listening to the message this week, one of the things God said is that sometimes there are certain doors that need to close before we can open new doors. There are certain things, there are certain seasons that have to end before we can walk into a new season. Because the one thing that's guaranteed that there's a transition that is currently happening, right? And some feel, some of us already are sensing that transition. You always know how a transition feels where things that used to work seem to not work anymore. Things where there was a little bit of grace and there's no more grace anymore because there's, there's a transition that's happening. But at times, if we're not careful to close certain doors, then our ability to enter into that new season is restricted. 
and we want just to spend time and we'll do this at the individual level because this is quite intimate. And if there are people, married couples here, if you want to do this together, you can, or if you're someone who you're very close with, maybe you can do it in twos, but if you're comfortable to do it by yourself, that's okay. It's now we just want you to take time to reflect. And Apostle had asked us to do this also last week. Are there certain doors that we are aware of that need to close, right? We've just listed some there, just as uh, some examples. You know, there are doors of rebellion and disobedience. We were here for this this month, uh, Pastor M said, Pastor Morelli said, one of the challenges we have, the biggest challenge and the one of the things introduced by the enemy was a rebellion, to go against authorities. And the thing about doors is the way, I don't know which movie or cartoons why, it's always like there are always two doors. Every time... A door is also sometimes a reflection of our choice. We're always put in these situations where we have to choose. We can choose to be rebellious or we can choose to, to abide and to follow. And sometimes that door of rebellion, it looks like it has gold platings. It looks like you're, it has a force, like an energy, the force that's just pulling us. And sometimes, and even as we're reflecting, and, and my wife said we should also take time to pray because sometimes, have you ever felt like there's a door there, one of these doors that are open, and you don't want to go there, but somehow there's a, something pulling you? Have you ever felt that? One of these things is just pulling you, right? There's a, an offense. Someone, you know, you know, you always have that family man, member. They always say that thing that just triggers you, right? And you feel even when uh, I'm good, I've been in the Holy Ghost, I've been in church three hours, but when they say that one word, it's like all this is forgotten and it just triggers you. And, and I'll speak for me at least. Sometimes I feel like it's so hard. It, it takes so much self-discipline not to walk through those doors, not to walk through a door of rebellion or offense or unforgiveness. And even as we take time to reflect, it's maybe also to take time to pray that God can assist you. Sometimes God, by his grace, can close some of these doors. So the, the effort that it used to take not to walk through those doors is lifted off you. Sometimes, you know, you look at some of these doors, doors of immorality. And here you have immoral immorality of character and sometimes it's sexual immorality as well. There are sometimes you just, you know, Apostle Angie just said, you slip and fell and, and you landed somewhere, right? Slip and fell and you're in an affair because you just felt like I couldn't help myself, right? Sometimes God can assist us with some of these doors just to, to close the doors. The same thing he did, I, I believe, with... In the book of Exodus with the Israelites, there was a door that they walked through when they walked through the, the, the Red Sea, right? And when he came back together, even if they wanted to go back, they couldn't, right? And God can do that for us as well. There are certain things he can drop off us so that we, we don't have to take that super strength. We don't have to always be super focused and been praying three hours in the spirit every day for us not to walk through that door, that it can be a, an ease for us so that we can always go to where God wants us to go, that these doors are not just closed, but are, are taken down and are no longer options. So very quickly, you see, for some people, there's, it's a door of rebellion and disobedience where we just choose to rebel. We don't want to listen to the authorities. We don't respect our authorities or we think we know better than our authorities. Right? The doors of offense and unforgiveness, doors of immorality, doors of debt and financial mismanagement. Right? Who's, you know, we've been in that place where, like, I just need to take this short term loan because something is going to come next month and it will pay for that. Then that thing doesn't come next month and you start getting into a cycle. And we always say at the start of the year, this year is going to be different. But we always find out, you know, rent is late or we have to pay for school fees or whatever happens. And we start to go into that door of, of financial mismanagement. And we feel like we're a victim of it. Right? Maybe today we reflect and as we pray, we can, we can ask God to start to close these doors. For some people, there's a door of fear and shame. Right? We're always fearful of what's happening. We're fearful of people's reactions. Every time something happens, we're fearful of the worst thing that can happen. We're fearful that anything that's given to us will always be taken away. Our testimonies will always be taken away. Every time someone says something, we always feel that they see our innermost being, that it feels like we're walking around naked. Everyone can see everything that is wrong with us. And we feel shameful. We feel shameful for maybe where we came from or what we've done or of our past. And it seems like it's always an open door, that it's always so easy 
to walk into that, that path of shame and of fear, but God can break that. For some of us, the doors of counterfeit, right? Doors of counterfeit are, are doors where it appears that this is similar to what maybe God is saying, but you can see there are certain things that are fundamentally off, that are not in line with what God's word says, right? There's a counterfeit of maybe we're in certain relationships we shouldn't be in. We're praying for marriage and we think that the person we're with is who God has chosen it, but we can see certain things that God is telling us that this is a counterfeit. There's a counterfeit in, in our business, in whatever relationship it is, so that we don't walk through that door of, of counterfeit. The other one is of ignorance, of naivety, and confusion. For some of us, there's, we have this thing, oh, we didn't know. We always, we're always caught off guard, right? And, and maybe it's the year where we have to start to read. You no, know, there's a scripture, my people perish for a lack of knowledge, right? But we can't always be that one who has a lack of knowledge, right? We can't always be the one who's always not aware of what's happening around us. Who Apostle Sanji says, we're always slipping and falling and falling into things, even though that there's signs saying, you know, slippery fall, uh, slippery floor and all that. So it's a season where we, we, we don't walk into the doors of ignorance, of naivety, and of confusion. You know, we've been listening to Bishop Moody's word, and he says one of the reasons why we, we don't walk into our inheritance sometimes is that we're always confused. We don't know the season that we're meant to be in. We're thinking it's a season of reaping when it's meant to be a season of planting seed, a season of enjoying life when it's meant to be a season of, of saving, right? Joseph knew the times and seasons and what to do with them. And lastly, there's sometimes there are doors of inconsistency and procrastination. We always start well. We always, you know, who's ever gone to the gym in January? Right? How full is that gym? Right? And, and nowadays they used to say by February, but sometimes by the third week of January, that place is empty, right? And some of us, we have that same thing. At the start of the year, we, we start to pray, we, we fast, we do these things, but our, there's always this door of inconsistency. There's always something that catches our attention, that keeps away from being inconsistent. Or, or sometimes there's procrastination, which is like delayed obedience, which is still disobedience. God has told us something to do. I was like, ah, God, let me first finish this. Let me finish that. Let me focus on this. Or I don't know where, how to start. And sometimes procrastination comes from those people who say, let me pray about it, right? Who's ever said that? You know, you're given a prophetic word. Apostle Angel has told you something and you said, let me pray about this. But you, you know what the word is. You know what you need to do. But that thing of let me pray about it, it's a, another form of procrastination. So maybe just for the next... Uh, 15 minutes, just on yourself or if couples or if people you're close with, find a way of just spending time of, of going or saying, what are these doors that need to close, right? Focus, what are these doors that need to close? Uh, DJ will just play some, some music in the, in the low background, but just think for you personally, what are these doors? This is not for your neighbor. This is not for your child. This is not for your friend or your spouse, but for you personally, what has God said to you? What is that door that needs to close? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, that it is you, Almighty Father, that carries the key of the city of David. Almighty Father, what you close, no man can open. Father, we declare and decree that today there are doors that you have closed. Father, we declare and decree that there are doors that you have sealed that shall never be opened again. Father, we declare that they're closed for us, for our generations present and future. Father, in Exodus, you told the Israelites through Moses. He said, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. Father, we declare and decree that as you close these doors, Father God, we declare and decree that the rebellion and disobedience we see today, Father God, we shall see no more. Father, we declare and decree, Father God, that the offense and unforgiveness and the fruit of offense, Father God, of, uh, of bitterness and resentment, Father God, we don't see them anymore, Father God. We see, declare and decree that the immorality and debt that we see today, Father God, with the closing of these doors, we shall see no more, Father God. No more counterfeit, no more naivety, no more fear and shame. That, Father, you're transitioning us into a new season where we do not see these things, where you have raised us to trample over snakes and scorpions and the power of the enemy has no power over us. 
we declare and decree that in this new season of open doors, we are no longer victims, Almighty Father, of these doors anymore, Father God. They, they no longer pull us. They are no longer connected to us. We declare and decree Isaiah 43, 18, that, Father, you see you are doing a new thing. It springs forth. We declare we perceive the new thing that you're doing. We declare your word that in Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. The old has passed away. The old that was connected to these doors, the old that had any spiritual connections, any soul ties to these doors. Father God, in Christ, we are now a new creation. The old is passed away and the new is here. A new newness of your overflow, of your grace, of your love shall engulf us in this season and the seasons to come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we still there? Please wave to me. Encourage me. Are we still there? All right. So, uh, DJ, next slide. The next thing that Apostle Angie talked a lot about last Sunday was about she prayed against the spirit of delay, right? She prayed against the spirit of delay. And she says sometimes it's a season of open doors that is now a time in that these things that were always promised to us, things that were always declared for us, things that were prophesied upon us, and you know that that thing that you just know in your spirit, this thing is, should have been here by now. Have you ever sensed that thing? You just know in your spirit that this, you know, we know that story of Daniel in, in chapter Daniel 10, right? He says, as soon as he prayed, his prayer was answered right there and then. But it took 21 days because his word was been fought, right? And for us, have you ever felt like your word has been fought, that your door has been fought? But what was declared and released last week, Sunday, was no more delay. There's some of these, and some of these are just examples of doors that are, are delayed. There are doors of, of marriage, which some people know. This thing has taken too long. There's something that's fighting. And God says this has been released. There are doors of birthing and of fruitfulness, birthing spiritually, birthing uh, spiritually, physically, financially, whichever form. It always to have a fruitfulness of in and out of season. Doors of promotion. You know, there's that promotion for you that you you know that it's meant to be coming. You feel like you've been forgotten. And Apostle Angie prayed against that spirit of people forgetting you that those kings will not be able to sleep like with Mordecai until they remember what you've done. Doors of vindication. At times we've stood for God and God had told us that he'll, he'll vindicate our faith, our standing firm in him. And we're like, when is this vindication coming? God has said no more delays. Some, some of us is doors of forgiveness and reconciliation. For us, maybe... There are certain things that happen that we, our ability to forgive. We know God has been asking us to forgive that person, to reconcile, but we've struggled. But God has now said the time has come to enable us to turn to that position where we can start to forgive. Or on the other side, where we've been waiting for others to forgive us. Whatever happened in the past, that, the, that there's been a delay, there's been a, us holding off. But God has said there's a time now of that. And also doors of restoration. Restorations in families. There are some families that have been strained beyond that time, but God is saying that that door is no more delay. And we read that word of Revelations 10, 6, and it says, and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, and it shall be that there should be no more delay or delay no longer. That's Revelations 10, 6. So take time. This again is not about your neighbor, your friend, what are those doors that you know are for you that have been delayed? When Apostle Angie released this prophetic question, she says, now we have to do our part. We have to do our part in prayer, in intercession. The first thing is if you don't even know that there's a delayed door, your ability to even pray and position yourself is restricted. So even as we just take, just take 10 minutes now, what are those things that you know are yours? There's been prophetic words spoken over and over again. There's those doors, you know, that should have been opened by now, but are not yet open for whatever reason it is. God is saying, this is the season. Push, push now in prayer, push now in reflection. What are those doors? And the thing that God says that once these doors are open, then they should not, they should not close. What? They shouldn't close again. Once the door of fruitfulness opens, it's not for just a season. But we're declaring that these doors are open in and out of season. You know, uh, the word she, she spoke about was Isaiah 60 verse 11 says the gates remain open day and night so that the wealth of the nations can be brought in. We're not just asking for these doors to be open for a season, but they remain open forever for generations to come so that your children benefit from these open doors. Your generations to come 
a thousand generations will benefit for the door that you are opening in this season. That God is opening through you and for you and for your generations. We'll just take time. Just We'll just take 10 minutes. Make it personal. Don't allow your mind to drift to other things. Be present. Ask God, what is what are those doors? If you're not aware of what these delayed doors are for you specifically, ask the Holy Spirit. Intercede. Ask them to tell you. Holy Spirit, to intercede on your behalf to reveal the, the open doors for you and then for your families. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you silence fear. For that with the name of the Son of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that you are Lord, that you are powerful, that you are almighty, that you are benevolent. We thank you, Almighty Father, that at your word, and your word has released that no more delay, Father God. No more delay for us, no more delays for our generations, Father God. What was ours, Father God? is now father god you tell us that it's a season of moving forward as a word you have released is a, a season of inheritance father god even lost inheritance are, are coming back father we thank you for these open doors that shall remain open in jesus name amen so let's do this because we're looking too deep now just come into groups of four it's very good find four people just to sit next to can you Put your chairs uh, curved in a way so that we have a bit more of an interactive uh, session. So groups of four. If you have to be three, three is also okay. But make sure no one is left out. Groups of three and four. Three and four, not five. Somebody has to find someone there. All right, great. So the next thing Apostle Angie spoke a lot about was this word of uh, Isaiah 45. And for the people in this ministry, we know it's been one of the most powerful words we've been writing for, for how, I don't know how long. Where is this, Carol? Mugo here? Oh, she's with the kids. Carol is knows. How long have we been writing with this word of Isaiah 45, 1, 2, 3? A long time. And, and it keeps coming back over and over again. And the, she was connecting this to the word of accurate positioning, that in this season of open doors, where your position is so important, right? And even when you read this word of Isaiah 45, 2 to 3, it says, you know, I'll go before you and make crooked places straight. I'll break the pieces of gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. And sometimes God can open these delayed doors because sometimes the enemy has been selling them shut. But the thing about this word that's powerful, it's God who opens the door, not us, right? He's the one who goes before us. But sometimes when we're not accurately positioned, God is trying to break down and open the door on this side. But as we're looking for this door on this side, God is trying to open up the door of marriage, but you're saying, no, God, I want the door of business to be opened. And sometimes that mis misalignment can cause us to miss our seasons, miss our open doors. Because by the time now we're, we're trying to relocate the door that God was opening, there's been a shift, there's been a movement, and we've missed our season. We've missed our visitation. We've, we've fumbled our transition. So there's a, there's a requirement that this season that we are accurately positioned, right? Where we're positioned is very accurate, right? For some people, the story of the prodigal son, right? While he was in the pigsty, he, he reached his end. He realized he was not accurately positioned, and he had to go back home, right? So for some of us, reflecting, am I a prodigal son in some sort of context that I've been rebelling, I've been going my own way, and I need to come back to my father's house? All right, for some people, they're Jonas, right? God is asking them to position them in, in inner way, and they're going the complete opposite. For whatever reason, you're like, those guys don't deserve it. Those family members, you're asking me to, to bail out again. They don't deserve it. But well, maybe God is saying that there's a blessing there. There's an open door as you obey him and be positioned where he wants you to be. And some people need to return to the, the last instruction. You've been going round and round, wandering the mountain over and over again. And we, we've been so lost for a while. We even forgot what that initial instruction was. Have you ever been in that situation? Like, what was, what, what was God saying that time? Or what was that message 
he was trying to say, and we, we got so lost and caught up in everything that we actually forgot what he had told us. Like those, those small kids who were sent to the shop by the mother, right? Halfway through, they forgot even what, that they had money in their pocket or where they were going. And three hours later, they come home with nothing, right? And some of us are like that way. God has sent us somewhere. Halfway through, we got distracted by the issues of life. So some of us, by the blessings of life, we forgot what the assignment was. And for us, we may need to go back to the last instruction so we know where to be positioned. For some of us, you know, the word Apostle Angie was, the thing about Goshen was for the family of Joseph to be positioned in Goshen. And sometimes your accurate positioning is for the benefit of your family. Because Joseph was positioned in Egypt. And when he started to prosper in Egypt, he was able to bring his family and give them the best, the best parts of the land because of his accurate positioning. So as you're accurately positioned, then how do I enable my family to be blessed? For them to have what God has desired for them because sometimes you're the door. Or so you always mentioned, maybe you're the open door for your family to walk through, right? And for some people, there's a preparation for this positioning. There's some people I know in this ministry who we love to be at the back. Right? Do we want to put our hands up? We, we like to be at the back. We like to be a backbencher. And God's saying that in this new season, there's a shift from the back to the front. A shift from being in the, in the shadows to be brought to the light, right? But you have to have that obedience. You have to have that, that, that understanding that it's God who's bringing you forward. It's not because you're extra good. It's not because you've studied extra hard or or been working really hard or anything. That it's God who's, it's his enablement that is bringing you to the front. And lastly, sometimes the positioning is actually under an authority and our community. A lot of us, maybe we've been doing life by ourselves and someone tells us something we don't like, hey, ladies. But we're not, we're missing the covering that is required for the season. All right, so for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, right, within the groups, right, just share just this thing about accurate positioning in this season, because it's going to be so fundamental. And you can think about accurate positioning in terms of what Apostle Sanjay always tells us, spiritually. Am I spiritually accurate, accurately positioned? How's my soul, my mind, my spirit, my emotions? My, oh, my mind, my soul, my emotions. Are those accurately positioned? Am I physically accurately positioned? Am I in the right place? Has God been telling me I need to shift? I need to move out of this house. I need to change this job. Am I physically positioned? Financially, am I financially positioned? Do I have budget? Do I have a six-month savings? How how are my finances positioned? Joseph was told there will be seven years of plenty and seven years of lack. So he had to really position himself during the seven years of plenty to prepare himself. Uh, geographically, am I positioned in the right country? Have I been given words that there's a season of transitional movement that I, I'm not aligning, aligning to? So within the groups, right? And sometimes the reason we do these groups is just to build a bit of accountability that as you share it to somebody else, it becomes real. For me, sometimes I say the voices in my head until I say it verbally, before I speak it, it's like it's not real. So as you speak it, it starts to get real. As you start to speak to the people in your group, how should I be accurately positioned in this season? All right, so that's, that's the theme. That's the, the topic of discussion. Make it personal for you, for your groups, for your families. How do we be accurately positioned in a season of open doors for Joseph's in the Goshen? These open doors, some of these characteristics of Joseph has to start to look in our lives. We start to have to see this, these uh, traits of Joseph in our lives, right? 
And, and this is just a, a, a mini summary of some of the things she spoke about. She said Joseph was, had divine enablement and excellence. He said the season that we're in, we have to start to walk around with a, an excellence in how we approach things. There's an excellence that even by the world standards, we're still excellent. You know, she talked about her book. That normally people used to say that if you do a book as a Christian, the pages fall out immediately. It doesn't last. But she's saying for us, we have to have a new definition of what a Christian is by the, so for the world to see, that we are witnessing an excellence of the word of God and that it's divinely enabled, not by strength, not by might, but by, our, by, our, by the spirit of God. Joseph was enabled divinely by the, the grace and, and glory of God. It's a season of interpreting the visions of kings and solving problems around us, that we're not the ones adding problems to the kings. But not the ones coming to the king and say, hey, there's another problem, right? Well, they're actually the ones coming to enable with solving the problems of kings, solving the problems of our society. We can interpret the visions of our kings, right? We're able to unlock the king may have a thought of, and the king here is maybe there's a boss in the office. Maybe it's a, a father. It's someone, some form of authority. We can come and show them or reveal to them through God what, what, how to unpack what they're, they're trying to do. Right, it's a season also of having strategy and planning in this season. You know, a vision and strategy are different. A, a vision is what God is, wants you to do. A strategy is how do we get there? And Joseph just didn't interpret the dreams of Pharaoh, but he says, "Okay, now that I've interpreted the dream and the vision, this is what we do about it. This is how we save through the the seven years of of plenty, so that in the seven years of lack we are okay." You have to start to see this trait in you this season that. You're going to be someone who always has a lot of strategy, right? It was declared upon us, so we have to start to move. We're not going to be the ones complaining, oh, taxes have gone up. What are we going to do? Oh, no, fuel has gone up. No, God is going to give you a divine enablement to come up with strategies of being fruitful. Even in a season where there's a famine and there's a struggle, God is going to give you divine enablement to be, to be fruitful, she talked about a season of resilience and bounce back ability that Joseph was very resilient. Every time he was given a prophetic word, he always looked like he was going the other way. He was told, you know, the stars will bow down to him. He went into slavery. From slavery, he went to jail, but he was resilient and he kept bouncing back. That even when he was in Potiphar's house, he was made the boss of the house. When he was in the jail, he was made the, the, the boss in the jail. There was always a way he kept bouncing back. And there has to be that. You can't be the one who you're hit with one blow and you're down for the count. There's a way of getting back onto your feet, right? There's a resilience. When the enemy attacks you, when something goes wrong, there's a presentation that day, you're late for the office. For some reason, you come just when the presentation is ending. The world cannot end that day, right? There's a way of coming back saying, no, tomorrow I'll be better. Tomorrow God will strengthen me for me to bounce back and even to reveal to everyone in this office that I carry the glory and the presence of God. She says that in the season of Joseph, you cannot go by yourself. You know, one of the greatest things that Joseph did, and you could even call it his calling, is that he forgave his brothers. If he didn't forgive his brothers, there'll be no, there'll be no Israel today. They would have perished in, in Canaan. But his ability to bring everyone with them was such a key thing. And it's a season where you can't go by yourself. Some of us were leaders in this room. We know how to get to their place. We know how to achieve our targets, and sometimes we do it at the expense of everyone. It can't be that this season. We have to find how do we take everyone with us? There's some people who are not as sharp as you, who are not as fast as you, but how do we still create systems and structures that we make sure we go with everyone, not just ourselves? Apostle Angie spoke a lot about, a, about the Potiphar's wife's test. You know, when you read the story of Joseph, Potiphar's wife tried to come on onto him, and he had to draw boundaries and say no. The king has given me everything, but not you. And she said, it's a season where uh, we have to be very clear what our boundaries are. Right? And sometimes some of the hardest things to do in life is to draw boundaries. Right? Boundaries for ourselves, boundaries for the people around us. And sometimes when people walk past our boundaries, we don't know how to act or react. And like the boundary doesn't exist. But this has to be a year of boundaries. We need to know how to set boundaries for ourselves, set boundaries for others, set boundaries for our families, our businesses, and operate within those boundaries in a clear and a coherent way. Then a season of knowing when the old seasons have ended. 
one of those doors we closed at the start. We know once they're closed, we know they're closed. We don't go back. The Bible says sometimes the dogs go back to their vomit. We can't be those ones going back to something that has come out of us. But we had to know that a season has ended. Joseph knew when the season had ended of, of being in the jail cell, he removed his prison garments and left them. We cannot be retaking the prison garments. When the reproach has been rolled away, we can't be taking back the shame and the fear and these things that have been cast away and, and, and taking them and accepting them as our identity. And also it's an, an ability and a season of seeing the bigger picture. We have to be able to see the bigger picture. Joseph kept saying, what the enemy planned for harm, God has used for good. He was able to see past the immediate storm because unfortunately there'll be a lot of storms this year in this season. And God has enabled you with divine enablement to see past the storm. Peter was able to walk on water when he could see past the storm and focus on Jesus. But when the storm overtook him, that's when he started to sink. As Joseph this season, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus over the storms, over the frustrations, over the distractions of life. And focus, keep your eyes on the target of what God wants you to, to see. And as we said, also forgiveness, reconciliation, and humility. Just like I said, it's not I who can interpret the dreams. It's, it's God enabling me. I think Apostle Sanji mentioned when uh, Prophet Dawkins was teaching that one thing we can never steal from God is his glory. He's jealous for his glory. And it's a season where we give him the glory. We allow him to take his rightful seat. So for the next 15 minutes, just within your groups, right? These are very nice things, but we need to make them relevant for us, right? In your groups, again, just share, not just excellence is nice, but what does this mean for me? What does this mean for my Monday morning? What does bounce the back ability mean for me on Tuesday or on Wednesday? When no one is looking, what do these things mean for me? How do I make sure that these things are working for me in this season? How do I get an awareness that these things are operating for me? So just take some time. Uh, you said 15 minutes, just to share that you don't miss these characteristics. You know, um, Apostle Joy said that God has given us a toolkit that enables us, we can use these tools any, any time. And these are part of the toolkit. God has increased your toolkit in this season. So you need to know, how do I know pull out bounce back ability? How do I pull out resilience? How do I pull out the excellence when, when required, irrespective of the pressures around me? So yeah, please please share within your groups. Share vulnerably. Be authentic in your sharing. Don't say the right thing that you think people want to hear, but say what's actually in your heart. Amen and amen. Joy, I'll need your help now. I think uh, we just want Joy will walk up to a few people just to share either specifically on this Joseph session or anything that's just fell today. The thing about today is this is not a once-off thing. The prophetic word released by Apostle Angie and the declarations and the infilling that she did for us and, and the grace, and she anointed us that day as well, right? And for the people who are in the current PLF class, I think you are anointed enough times now for the for the foreseeable future. It's, this is not something we do once and then we move on with life. Over the course of this year, and I've shared this presentation on the Mavuna Marketplace WhatsApp group. And for the people who don't have access to that, just check with one of the ushers at the back that they can share this presentation with you because this has to be a continuous process. Some of these doors may not close immediately. We have to keep closing them throughout the whole year. You have to be praying for those delayed doors throughout the whole year. We have to be accurately positioned throughout the whole year. We always have to have these Joseph traits throughout the whole year of knowing the timings of seasons and the desires that out of this, you get specific prayer points for your season this year. And this is at the individual level. Don't wait for Apostle Andrew to share prayer points. You can have your specific prayer points. You can take authority over your own open doors that God has, but it's always through prayer that these things are ushered through. As you go throughout the whole year, just keep keep coming back to this. Keep coming back to what was released. Keep coming back to what you received last that last week, and saying that even though it looks like I'm going the other way, God has spoken something upon my life that must manifest. 
that I'm not going to I'm not going to allow the enemy to convince me that I missed it. I'm not going to allow the enemy to convince me that it was a a fad. You know, it was just a nice thing. It's just Apostle Angie was excited that day. Right? There's more than that. We have to push in so we don't forget. God keeps telling us remember, remember, remember. And through our prayers, it's one way we can keep remembering. So Joy, uh, please uh, walk up to one or two or three or four. The, remember the ones who look at their shoes are the ones we want to hear from. Okumba. Okumba, ah, Joy, you have to be bold. Just give it to them and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me open my notes um, I think for me uh, my key takeout will be on the accurate positioning uh, just being able to understand the season um, the time and having the ability to hear from God at that time because um, even from our discussions it's um, at that season if you are not in a position to hear the spirit man you might make a decision based on your feelings, but um, most of the times it's actually the bigger picture and the bigger picture is where the Holy Spirit comes. Um, case in point, uh, Jonah. Uh, when Jonah was sent to Nineveh, Jonah was thinking like him. He didn't put the perspective of thinking like God putting people, how God would have put the people of Nineveh. Um, Cause those guys were very wicked. They were killing kids. So Jonah was like, if these guys repent, God will surely forgive them. But if I take the message to them, uh, they will not repent and that will not happen. Um, so it's just the ability to be able to take the step and to hear the spirit man. Um, yes. Thank you, Okumba. And you know, my wife had done Bible school, the same school as Dr. Tekla. And they always used to speak about diet, exercise and environment. And sometimes that speaks so much into positioning. So if you're, there's something, you know, God is positioned to you. What's your diet? What are are you eating? What is your environment? Where are you going? Which places are you going? You know, some people who are trying to give up drinking, but they're always going to the club. They're always surrounding themselves with people who are drinking. You're not accurately positioned for what you're trying to achieve. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with drinking, but whatever God is calling you for that season, if he's calling you for marriage, but you're always in your house, right? And you, no one ever sees you out there. You're not going to places God wants you to be, right? So I think just in, in line with Otto Kumba is saying, what, what is it, what's the diet, what's the exercise, and what's the environment? And is that consistent with where God wants you to be accurately positioned? Are you eating that thing? Are you, are you drinking that thing? Are you consuming that thing? And in line with what God has asked you to, are you in the right environment? Are you in the right exercise? Are you saying the right prayers? Is it an important thing to you or not? Joy, who's next? Oh, that's a deep person right there. Prophet Stella, what do you have for us? As you said, uh, Apostle George, I think uh, what comes out very strongly is uh, what season? What season am I in? What season are we in? Um, as we know, there's seven years of of of, of harvest there can be seven years of dryness yeah okay can you hear me now so in what season are we in or am i in there can be a season of dryness and it can take seven years of dryness it can take seven years of harvest so knowing what season we are in is very important because just like we were sharing with my team here it's like when you're swimming and um, it's the butterfly uh, 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 tile, you're swimming the other opposite. You're swimming freestyle. And what it means, it's not the season for freestyle, it's a season for butterfly. So, in actual fact, that means you're in the wrong season. And when you switch to the butterfly or switch to the, um, the other star, then you are in confusion because that's not what God intends for you. So it's being purposeful, being very intentional 
of knowing what season we are in and asking the Holy Spirit to guide us so that we don't miss out on our season because it can take another seven or four years or three years to align to the season that we should be. And then we are calling it what? Delay. Well, in actual fact, we should have that discernment or that pressing in the Holy Spirit to actually allow us to know and guide us into the seasons that we are in. The other thing is about boundaries. What are you setting for yourself? You have so much time for this. You have time for family, you have time for children, but you also have time for self. What is it that you've been asking God for at that time, at this season, at that uh, 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 hour? If you're asking God to move you into the mountain of uh, business, how much time are we spending praying that day, each day? Because it's not a touch and go. We have to spend some time in the area of pain, in the area that you want something done. And for you to connect with our father, even for him to have time to guide you or to guide me into that thing that we are praying for. If we are praying for marriage, if we are praying for children, if we are praying for business, then spend that time because it's a pain. It's a process that God will take us through. And once we are through out of that process, then we have conquered, but we cannot touch and go. We have to spend time each day until the breakthrough comes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Prophet Stella. And there's something you spoke about seasons that, that you mentioned that is, I think we need to just go a bit deeper is, you know, it says the Israelites, when they were going to Canaan, it's a trip that could take what? Is it six weeks or six months? I think six months. And it took them 40 years. And sometimes people are calling something a season and they're waiting for the next season, but it's actually their actions that will transition them to the next season, right? And sometimes people are going around a mountain that God never desired them to go around. So what she said is so powerful that sometimes Joseph understood, what do I need to do in this season so that I can trans transition into the next one? Because there are some seasons which are time capped that you just have to be there for a certain time period. But there are some seasons, depending on the assignment that God has called you for in that, in that season, as soon as you fulfill that assignment, that, that season will end. And having that wisdom and not having the confusion can allow you to transition through seasons and not be stuck uh, in seasons. Joy, who's the last person? The last one. So choose wisely and powerfully. Ah, there we go. Very own Patricia. So uh, I'll share on Joseph's attributes. And uh, one of the things we like saying amen to is when we are called Joseph's, it feels nice that we shout a big amen, but nobody wants to go through what he went through to become who he became. And one of the things we've shared in our group that the backbone of who Joseph was, was forgiveness, reconciliation, and humility. That he couldn't have served his excellence in Egypt if he had not forgiven them. He went to this land and a slave. He would have gathered his own income in the seven years, Allah for Ende, because it'd be like, you brought me here as a slave to suffer, I'll leave you suffering. I can live. So that is the biggest backbone. And the reason why you see humility in line with forgiveness, it's because that forgiveness, sometimes we are saying that forgiveness is about you taking a responsibility that was not your fault and extending it to this other person who could have been at fault continually. That this person, you, you extend forgiveness to them, they let they do not forgive you. You keep doing it continually, continually. And you have to be humble. You have to die to self to know that it's not about you. It's about me extending this forgiveness to this person. And Val has shared something very profound that the proof of forgiveness is reconciliation. That you can say you have forgiven me. Sometimes I want to forgive you and you stay as far away from me as possible, but I have forgiven you. But sometimes, not maybe with everyone, but sometimes the proof of forgiveness is reconciliation. So for us to know that literally when God says it's not about you, Joseph portrays it, that it's not about you. He could have gone to Egypt, lived a good life and went and bragged back to his brothers. But when God says it's not about you, that you have literally to lay your life on the line, allow him 
to to teach you the true meaning of forgiveness allow allow him to teach you the true meaning of reconciliation so that you are able like you have to when you have to perpetrate god's will you have to allow yourself to get out of the way so yeah and maybe one other thing on accurate positioning uh, that one of the things we've learned about being accurately positioned is sometimes it's, it does not feel nice. You know, when you think because you're accurately positioned, everything is flowing, there's peace, there's joy, there has, there's happiness. Sometimes even in the storm, when you feel like you're literally falling off the edge, that could, uh, that could be, you are very accurately positioned. Take heart, my sisters and brothers. So yeah, thank you. Amen, amen. And that's the thing, Patricia, is when God accurately positions you, even in the storm, there's divine enablement. Because maybe you're there to speak to that storm. Right? So you're there accurately positioned in the storm, but you're complaining like everybody else. Oh, this storm. But, you know, in, in the word, uh, God spoke to the storm. He rebuked the storm to be still. And it was. And sometimes maybe God is accurately positioning you where there's massive storms, frustrations, chaos. And you, you're looking like everybody else. Where is this person going to come and save us when it's actually you who's been divinely enabled? So that's what Joseph says. Uh, you know that even if it's in the storm, there's a reason I'm in this storm. Maybe I'm the one to quieten down this storm so that others can benefit. So thank you all. Uh, can we just clap for ourselves? We, are, we haven't wasted the word. We'll continue to unpack this word. Make sure, you know, when you see a neighbor in a month or two months from now, ask them, hey, are you still bounce back ability? I don't know if that's a word. Are you still being resilient? But you know what people shared in this group? Help in love, obviously. Don't uh, rebuke people publicly. But in love, let's keep each other accountable. That, you know, we don't want to be those friends who, you know, that friend who went to the gym only once in January, never went again. Let's keep building building what God has started in us. Let's keep building to see what's going to look like so that a year from now, we're like, look, look at all the fruit that God has birthed through this word, through for us consistently going into it. Maybe if I may ask if we could just stand and we, we just say a, a prayer just to seal all this, all that God has done. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, we glorify, we praise you. Thank you, Father, for moving in this place. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for Apostle Ange. Father, she has toiled and prayed in her secret place to come, not just to, to release a new word to us, but to declare and decree and to establish this word in us. And Father, we know that this, the same way that we carry blood in our veins, Apostle Ange has established this word in each and every one of us, that Father God, we just have to come back to you. We just have to come and war with these words prophetically in prayer and intercession and fasting that these words, we declare and decree, they must manifest. Father, we declare and decree upon everyone here in this space. Father, these words shall not return back to you void, but shall fulfill all that they are to fulfill. We declare and decree that no weapon fashioned against these words and everyone in this room, no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. That, Father, we are submitted to you. We have resisted the enemy, and the enemy shall flee from each and every one of us. Father, we declare and decree with the Jeremiah anointing that we uproot, we overthrow, we tear down, and destroy every evil thing left behind by the enemy as he flees. And no empty space is left behind, but the Spirit of God flows in with the blessings of the season of salvation, of healing, of deliverance, of obedience, of restoration, of apostolic and prophetic establishment, God's overflow, God's abundance, God's fruitfulness, God's honor, God's glory, God's power, God's love, and God's justice floods into each and every one of us that we shall have a Joseph season. That, Father, we are walking through every open door. Father, the door you have set open for us, we're not looking for doors to open, but we're in obedience and submission to your spirit. We're walking where you have led us. The true sons are the ones led by your spirit. Father, where you have led us, we are walking through those doors, Father God. We're not going to ask a thousand and one questions. We're not going to have paralysis analysis. But, Father, in obedience, we're pushing through. Father, we're pushing through individually and we're pushing through with our families, with our generations, carrying everyone with us, Father God, that as we go, we're going to declare your glory. We're going to declare your majesty, making sure that the world knows that it is Jesus Christ that sits on the throne. Father, we declare and decree that as we move through those doors, we're moving with power and authority. Father, we are no longer victims. We're not longer wondering when the new taxes are coming into being. Father, we're not longer complaining about things in Kenya are not complaining about fuel prices, Father God. 
in a season of famine, Father God, it says Isaac reaped a hundredfold harvest because you blessed him. Father, we declare we are Isaacs in this room. Father, even though there's a famine around the world, we don't care. We are the ones who are blessed. We shall be fruitful in and out of season. We shall have multiplication in and out of season. We shall have dominion in and out of season. Father, we shall be Joseph's. And Father God, as we walk through our open doors, we declare and decree we shall be open doors to others. That Father, through us, generations are going to be walking through. Father, through us, the nation of Kenya and the nations of that we are from shall be walking through. For your glory, Father God, we ask that through this season we do not forget that it's all about you father it's all about you in this season wherever we go may it always ring in our ears the bigger picture it's all about you that we're sons kings and priests to serve and to glorify your name we thank you and we glorify you father in jesus name amen a cheer for god please let's a cheer for god hey! Amen and amen. Uh, DJ can hit some.